Well, guess what I've got for you today? This is your Sew It Seamstress, and I have a really great trick to do it. Well, you all have to. You have to thread the machine, you have to thread the needle. And as you're older like me, you can't see as well. <laughs> so that little tiny hole in there is a pain in the butt to get thread through. And you end up cutting your thread, what, through? And then it expands and you put the thread in and pull it back through. To use one of these on a sewing machine, it just, because of the handle, it just doesn't maneuver. It, it, you can't bend it around. I've tried it. I've tried lots of things. And I thought, as a tiny hole, and that wire is really, really thin, and it does squish, you know, it, it, it collapses. So I thought, I know. I tried fishing line. Yeah, it was okay, except it was too thick. I couldn't find a fishing line fine enough to be able to go through that hole twice. Because you have to remember, whatever you use to pull the thread through has to be thin enough to fit in there twice the thickness that it already is. So I looked around and looked around and I thought, what else do I have laying around here that I could use for this machine and try to thread this thing? And I had a... Uh, Thread. Thought I did. What did I do with it? I covered it up. There it is. So I got this beading thread. All right. I got this beading thread. And I thought, well, let's try that and see. Because I haven't really done this yet. But trust me, I have the right one. I've been using a certain tool that not every sewer might have. But a crafty person would. So I'm going to make sure I've got two clean ends on this. This is a real, it's almost like a waxed beading cord. It may work. I don't know. I haven't tried this one yet. So I may have two tools to use. Now the trick is, remember you're pulling the back from the front. So you have to put the two raw ends of whatever your tool is through the front. One end at a time. That I learned the hard way. Can't put two of them in there at once. You have to do one at a time. So let's see if this actually does work. I'm going to take the thread back out of the needle. I've already tried this several times with the other tool I have. And the great thing about this beaded cord that's stiff is it goes in and it doesn't flop around and it doesn't give you make you start yelling. Because I'm always yelling at the thread because it won't thread in the machine. So then you take the other end. Let me get that so you can see what I'm doing down here. All right. And let's see if I can get it. I need to turn it around just a little bit. Oh my goodness. So you can maybe see the needle there. Okay, there's the needle. So I put it through once. Now I'm going to take the other end of it, hold on to that so it doesn't come out, and put it through, but not all the way. So I say, oh look, two ends came to the other side. So now I have a loop, right? So I'm going to take my thread and put it through that loop. But you got to be careful that it doesn't come back out. It happens sometimes. Hold those two ends. Pull that thread through the loop. And then you got the two ends of your tool, right? So we're going to pull that. And let's see if it pulls that thread through there. Well, look at that. I have two tools to show you then. This is, isn't this awesome? Look how easy that was. No, no yelling at the thread or anything. Now, the first tool that I used was... There's a beading, you know, beading needle that has that little wire on it. I don't know if y'all can see it, but it has that little loop on the end and that's so that it squishes when you pull it through. I tried it. It doesn't work. No, because the stem of it is a little too thick and it just doesn't work as well. I mean, this is a different beading needle. I know the one I used before didn't work, but I'm going to try this one and see. So we may have three tools that we can use. Um, sometimes beading needles are easier to keep track of. So I put the stem of the beading needle in. I'm going to put my thread through that little loop in the out end here. If I can see to put it through there. That's the challenge I have. I like the big loop with the beading cord much better. But for longevity reasons, I have a third one. So I've got my thread through that little loop in the end of the beading needle. And I'm going to pull that needle to the back and see if I can get my thread through my needle. Yeah, it, it struggles, but yeah, 
we have three new tools, people. Guess what the third one is? It's beading wire. Yep. The beading wire thickness that you want to have get is point, point 0.5 or point 0.7. Point 0.7 is thinner than then and point 0.5 is. When, when it comes to beading wire, the higher the number, the thinner the wire is. So I had some jewelry I was working on, crafty person that I am, and I got some beading wire. Okay? And this beading wire did the same thing. But put one end in first through the needle. It goes in easy because it's not flop. It's not floppy. It's nice and stiff. And then take the other end and put it through there as well. Of course, I curled the end of it the last time I put it through there. I got to straighten it out. Now, what I do with my new beading, not beading, my new threading tools is I keep them in a little Ziploc bag and I have it marked. So you don't lose them when you get done with it. Put it in a little Ziploc bag that in your sewing basket or wherever you uh, store your your um, other tools. And uh, that way you won't lose them. Because it's easy to lose something that's so thin and so tiny. So I'm going to take this thread through here. Through this little loop. And get that through that thing. Okay, now it's through the loop. Same thing, I'm going to pull the two tails, and voila. Now, don't you wish you knew that one? So you have three new tools to thread your machine, your machine needle, without taking the needle out and threading it outside of the machine, putting it back, like I used to do when I get so frustrated. So we've got the beading wire, 0.5 or 0.7 thickness. That's millimeters. <laughs> and then you've got the beading cording, which is a real thin cloth kind of thread but it's stiff it's almost like wax cord it may be wax cord it came with a, a kit that i got to make a beaded bracelet or something and i didn't use it all so i had some left and i used that or you can use a beading needle that's a collapsible one so you look up collapsible beading needles and you're good to go so i thought i only had one tool to share with you but there's actually three Everybody's got a little bit of some kind of crafty thing around the house. I know I do. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, this new little trick. Um, I have ha I have a, a person who subscribes and asked about threading the needle with a needle threader. Well, the needle threaders don't work. <laughs> Not to my satisfaction. These things, this little plastic thing, it gets in the way. You can't go behind here. And pull it through. They needed to make these the opposite direction <laughs> or something or just leave the plastic thing off because you can't get I mean I can't get my little hand back there and it doesn't it doesn't curve to the hole from the back to pull through. So beading cord stiff and thin 0.5 millimeter or 0.7 millimeter beading wire or a beading needle. Who would have thought that a beading needle would be good to use with a sewing machine? If you've liked this video, please share it. I know there's tons of gals out there and guys who fuss at having to thread the machine all the time. But if you have these three things, you've got it made. And then leave me a comment. Let me know if you try it. And tell me if you like this little trick because it works every time. Every time, whether your thread is clean cut on the end or not, it doesn't matter. You don't have to keep snipping five and six and seven times to get the thread through there now because you have this tool. Something that simple. Isn't that amazing? So if you've liked this video, would like to see more little hacks that I've come up with as they go by, make sure you subscribe. And I'll be happy to answer any questions or comments that you have if there's something else. This was this was a, a question. It's like, well, how do you thread the needle without too much trouble? Can you use a needle thread? I said, you can try to use one. I don't. Hope you've enjoyed the video. This has been a short, sweet one. But I think it's going to save you guys a lot of fussing and save you a lot of time on your project so you can concentrate on getting things on. I'm back soon.